Wow. Uh, let's not read the news. How about we just start off with that? Um, let's just get that out of the way. Let's not read the news. Um, because the thing is, is whatever happens here really has no real consequence in a way of how big God is. In the perspective of eternity, it really bears no weight because it's not the first time something like this is happening in the world and in history. If you read your Bibles, you will see the types of rulers they were under. And 2021 rulers ain't got nothing on them. Right? And in the end of 2021, if they do have something on them, and we find ourselves in a lion's den, or we find ourselves in a coliseum being fed to the lions, who who are we going to hope in? So it, it, it comes down to really a couple of things. In this world, we use the word hope like we use the word love. Hope has been actually um, very misrepresented in the world and in our uh, our language, in our English language. Hope is just like, oh, I hope so. Ooh, fingers crossed. Hope, hope, hope. Oh, I hope you're doing okay. Oh, I hope they're coming tonight. Oh, I hope it's going to be quick. It's It's so overused that we forget what hope actually means and what Jesus' intent for hope actually is. So that when we read the scriptures with hope, we then transfer it to what we know it is in our language. And it's wrong. So let me just get that out of the way. It's wrong. So I'm going to redefine hope for you tonight. And I hope that it goes well. (laughs) Um... (laughs) <laughs> so I don't know about anybody else but when 2021 was coming in like New Year's Eve day I had a hard time I was like I don't think I want to go anywhere forward <laughs> I think we're just going to stay right here now that's unusual for me I'm usually like oh let's see bring it on God I mean it couldn't have been worse than last year And then that year comes in, and by the time it's done, I'm like, well, this year can't be as worse as that, that, or right? And then you just keep thinking that. And so then I got to, like, this year, and, like, this is now, like, it's been three years in a row of just, like, every year saying, oh, it can't get any worse. And then it's like, or maybe it can? I don't know. So... When 2021 was coming in, it was like New Year's Eve. I'm like, yeah, let's just go to bed. I don't even care. Um, and then New Year's Day came in and I was just grump. I was a grump. I was frustrated and angry and I didn't say a whole lot. And Johnny's like, you okay? I'm like, mm-hmm. But it's like, I just didn't want it to come. I didn't want it to be here. I didn't, I, uh, it was like, I don't want to see what this year holds. I don't. I don't know if I can handle it. I hope that I can, but I just don't know. And I just don't want to see what it is. I'd rather just lay down and bury my head and hopefully it just, well, not quite there, Nicole, but um, (laughs) she said die for everybody online. Uh, Not quite there, um, but (laughs) it was like this feeling of like, oh, here we go. Can I do it? So I asked the Holy Spirit. I mean, probably it was a couple days later, folks. I don't think it was that day. I probably should have done it that day, and I didn't. It was a couple days later, and I said, what is going on? Why? And he said, well, that's because you're hoping in the year. You don't hope in a year. And you've been hoping in these years. In the year that's in front of you, you're, you're hoping in that. But your only hope is me. Period. It's not even in him. 
Our hope is him. So I thought, oh, okay. Well, then I was supposed to speak last week. And I thought, well, that's a word to kick off to 2021. And then I got really sick. So I was like, oh, I guess not. So then I, and so then Nicole asked me to speak this week and I was like, yes, cause it's still the very beginning of the year and we need a little bit of hope specifically with what we all are reading and hearing. And it's just nuts. The world is going a little bit crazy, but the thing is, is that's not new. History says it. It's not new. There's nothing new about this. And so I don't know. We just maybe need to stop making it a new thing. Like, oh, I can't even believe it. It's like, let's just read history, people. Let's just start looking at what happened before. Let's just start reading our Bibles. And hearing what they went through and the things they were doing. Like in Thessalonians, um, it's... I, I, I'm not going to read it, but I'm just going to tell you about it. So don't panic Josh up there with the scriptures. Um, but in, in first Thessalonians, uh, I believe it's the second chapter and he, Paul's like writing to this church and he's saying like, we, we suffered many trials so that we would be, so that God tested us. So we would be good enough for you. Okay. So they were tested before he ever sent them to that church just to make sure that their character was so refined and their heart was so pure that then they could be sent to that church to impact them. And then when they got there, they dealt with a ton of persecution. And it says we were treated unkindly and the list goes on of all the words he used to describe how they were treated. And it's just like, I'm pretty sure I would have said, Uh, maybe this isn't for me, you know, at the first one. And so I'm reading it thinking, man, he had such hope in Jesus, not in anything. And it said there, my favorite thing, and I keep reminding myself of this when I feel like, man, I don't know if I could do another hour. I'm tired. But it's like, he said, we, do you remember we worked all night? So that we could preach the gospel all day. So we worked so to gain money so we wouldn't be a burden on you all night long. So that we could preach the gospel all day. And then we're asked to be here till 9 p.m. And we're like, oh, do you know that my kid gets up at four? Do you understand that? Right? But I'm like, I'm not, I'm not there. My hope isn't Jesus in those moments. But then you start looking at the world and it's craziness and you think, I need to hope in something. I need, I need to grasp for something. I need to, and it's Jesus, period. Jesus. So we're going to actually take a look at hope for a minute and, uh, and what it actually uh, means in the English language. So this is the funny thing is they actually changed the word hope to the meaning. So I'm going to read you the current definitions, and then I'm going to read you what they call the archaic definition. Okay? Not kidding. It's in the, it's in the dictionary. It's weird. So the meaning of hope is a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. And the second meaning is want something to happen or be the case. The archaic definition to trust. Uh... We probably should have kept that one. It's probably shouldn't one we shouldn't have changed. Like to trust. Period. There was no elaboration. There was not just to trust. And it's archaic. But I'm really sure that the world has got it wrong. And we as Christians need to have it right. And it's Jesus. To trust. Jesus. Not in the situation, not in the case or something to happen, but Jesus. So it says, uh, so I looked up, like, how does the English language use hope? Like, how do we in our English language use hope? And this is what it said. It said, hope is used when the speaker believes the situation is possible. And this is the cool thing. We also interchange hope and wish. So hope and wish 
are like on the same playing field. Now, hope though is used when we feel like a situation is possible and wish is when we feel like something is impossible. But what we need to do is those two things just need to go together in one thing. And it's trust in Jesus. Impossible or possible? Hope. Just Jesus. Impossible or possible? Just Jesus. Because it doesn't really matter. The situation, the circumstances, they don't matter. Just Jesus. So then, so I, it says, this is how it's used. I hope that you have a great time. I hope that she passed the exam. I hope to pass the exam. I hope to get there early. That's how we use hope. But then I thought, well, let me see what the, how the Bible uses hope. And this is how the Bible uses hope. Hope has three different definitions. Okay, so three different words are used in the Bible for hope. Two in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. The two in the Old Testament are yakal and uh, kava. Now, one means to to wait for, like anticipation. And the other one is the feeling of tension before something happens. So like that feeling that you get when you know something's going to happen, and it's that tension between, that's the hope place that the Old Testament talked about. So it says... Uh, in in Hebrew, hope is uh, what the waiting is about, the waiting or the expectation. And it's based on a person, and it's different from optimism. So when they spoke about hope, it was never the situation, but it was anticipation of a person. And it was the tension they lived in when they were waiting for the one. Not waiting for their circumstances to change, but waiting for the one. The one that will come to save them. I'm like, wow, okay, let me just keep going. Let me dig a little deeper. Let's see, let's see what else God's doing in, in the Bible here, because this is important stuff. And it says that um, optimism is different, because optimism is choosing to see how circumstances could work out for the best. So optimism and hope often get intertwined here as well in the English language, or they're thought to be one of the same, but they're different. Because hope is not circumstantial, but based on a person. And hopeful people in the Bible mostly recognized that there was no evidence things would get better. But they chose hope anyway. We are in a circumstance, in a situation all over the world. It doesn't matter what country you come from. Where it does not look like it's going to get better. So we, our response should be, should not be, well, I hope it does. But I hope in Jesus because he does. And he is and he will. Because he died on a cross for you and for me. So then I thought, okay, that's two in the Old Testament. Let's just see what the New Testament says. The the New Testament's uh, version of hope is to anticipate. And it's to anticipate in someone, not something. And it only refers to one, Jesus. Only one. Whenever it's used, it's only in reference to Jesus being the one that they hope in, that they hope for, that they hope to, that that is hope, embodies it. So I'm going to throw up uh, my, my scripture verse in Romans, Romans 15, 13. It says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. (sighs) 
And concerning you, my brother, and I myself also am convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able also to admonish one another. We need to remind each other not to be hopeful for 2021, but to place all our chips on Jesus. Because it doesn't matter what happens in 2021. And that is a great big statement. Because it's so unknown. And that's the reason why hope is so crazy. Because you can't necessarily see the circumstances and know how they're going to work out. But he does. So when we hope Jesus... When we are firmly, solidly placed and planted on Jesus. Then the storms can come. 2021 can show up. It can keep going forward because that's what time does. Just keeps moving. And then we have a choice. Are we going to hope in the circumstances? Or are we going to hope in Jesus? But the thing is, is the thing, the thing is, is that before we can hope in Jesus, we have to be able to look back to what he did for us, to know his faithfulness. And that's what, that's what the Bible does. That's what the people in the Old Testament and the New Testament do. They constantly looked back at God's faithfulness in their life to know that, that he can be the hope. Because of his faithfulness in the past, they knew he was going to be faithful in the future. So that when they were tossed into the Colosseum full of lions, their hope wasn't in their circumstance, people. (gasps) Their hope was totally in Jesus and the fact that they were going to see him face to face. And that the eternal matters. And that perspective matters. Now that's like, that's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. It's a hard pill to swallow sometimes. With emotions and death and just us. We like to hope in us and the things that we have because we don't often look back at his faithfulness in our life. So then when we start to move forward, we start just clinging to the things that are in front of us because people have let us down. Circumstances have let us down. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Jesus has never, never, ever, ever let you down. And sometimes we get to a place where we feel like he has. But we don't have the final story. We don't know the end yet. We're still in the middle, guys. We don't know the end yet. And even though the middle might be painful, and the middle might feel like it's torture, and the middle might feel like it's punishment, and the middle might feel like you're in the craziest season of your life, We don't know the end yet. We don't have the eternal perspective yet. We don't have the hindsight. I remember when, before I met Johnny and before I got married and I spent 20 years praying for my husband and I spent a long time single in my twenties and into my thirties. And I just would, people would say, Oh, hindsight's always 2020. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, let's fast forward to the hindsight so I can see the 2020. Thank you. You know, it's like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> like, thank you very much. Not helpful. No. <laughs> right? But it's true. Because I look back and I think, oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus, for hindsight. Now I know why. And I'm so glad. And there will be a day when you stand at the end of this earth 
embracing heaven that you will look back and say, oh, that's why. But while we're here, while we're in the middle of the story, while the chapter is just being finished and the next one's coming and you just don't know what's going to happen. And it's on the edge of your seat because you think, wow, that chapter ended like that. How is the next one going to go? Is it going to be worse or is it going to be better? And we just don't know. But it shouldn't even matter. Because it's just Jesus. Because his faithfulness throughout history, generations, millennial, millenniums, millennials, millenniums, through time has proven his faithfulness. So it doesn't even matter if you've just started out on this journey. Because he gave you a whole Bible full of places where he was faithful to show you that he's going to do that in your life too. And it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of your story and you've been a Christian for a long time, but you've just lost sight. You've just been caught up in the chapters and what they're telling you. And you just think, I want to stop the book. Somebody stop the book. Please put down the pen. Let's rewrite a few. But the thing is, is he's faithful. So therefore, whatever the chapters ahead hold, whatever the book looks like, however long and however short it is, it's in his hands and he is faithful and he is hope. To trust. Jesus. To trust. And if there is any place in your heart that just says, I can't even do that. I can't trust Jesus. That's too scary. I have to be in control. People have let me down. I feel let down by God. I feel let down by people. I feel let down by myself. I can't trust people. I can't trust God. I just got to take it and hold on to it. Search your heart. Whatever area that you feel like that. He wants you to take the first step of just opening your hands and seeing what he'll do. Because I'm telling you, he's faithful. And if you don't believe my story, find any one of the pastors and staff and ask them, tell me your story. How is he faithful? And they'll tell you and they'll show you You can be there too. And believe me, we don't get it right all the time. I went into 2021 going, can somebody please put down the pen? I don't really want to see how this one goes. I'm just going to close my eyes. But he loves you. He's for you. He sent his son for you to die on a cross for you so that you would have hope. Jesus. So I want everybody to close your eyes. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, search my heart. Change my wrong thinking. Set my path straight. And if you just need to take the first step of opening up your hand and letting him. I want you to be bold and take that first step by standing up and coming to the front and just doing business with him. If your hope has been in other things, stand up and come to the front and do business with him. Take that step. Because he wants to meet you in that place. Jesus is the only way that we will walk through 2021. Yes. 
and we will do it successfully. Not perfectly, but successfully if we hold fast to him as hope. Jesus, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our hearts and in our life. I choose today to again say that I put my hope in you, Jesus, in you alone. Not in 2021, not in the future, not in what I don't know and not in what could happen. But just you. You are faithful and you have proven that over and over to me. I trust you. I walk forward with you. I stand on you and your truth. You are the rock that I build my life upon. I can get some of the ministry team to come up and pray for the people up here and then if you need prayer for anything else I'm just going to have one of the ministry team stand on each side one of the pastors and then you guys can fill in from there get prayer don't let tonight go by without doing something different without creating change in your life doing business with him Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.